Hi, Gavin here again. I'm just making another video showing what it takes to make a hand hammered gutta percha golf ball. And we've got some in a pan there, just boiling away. Next to the potatoes for dinner. Okay, so that's fresh out of the water. Um, it's uh, nice and soft. So now you just need to roll it into a very, very good ball shape. And that takes quite some time. The trick I find is do a little bit and then pop it back into the water. Give it um, probably 30 seconds to a minute. Take it out and uh, do it over. So this is about the fourth time this has been in the water and out again. And it's starting to get a good shape to it. Maybe a couple more times. Okay, so it's now back in the water for its final time. Once you've got the ball to a good spherical shape, you have to put it in some cold water just for a few seconds. I've now got this ball, just the shape I want it, now to start hammering it. I've come into my workshop now. I've put the ball into a little uh, metal cup that I use for this and um, get your hammer. You want a traditional cobbler's hammer. Very small with a nice sharp end on it. And you, first of all, you do a complete 180 circle of the ball, sort of laying out the pattern as it were. You're not looking for accuracy at this point in time. You're just sort of trying to get, if you like, an, a, a one whole ring of grooves in a straight line, if you know what I mean, all the way around the ball. Okay? Like that. Right, and then you do the same at 90 degrees. And why you do this is so that you can navigate, if you like, the pattern. Otherwise, you just end up with a ball, of course, that would just be randomly hammered all over. But what we're looking for is a particular pattern of grooves. And the particular pattern of grooves that I use is called the Forgan pattern. So now I've put the counter grooves going at right angles. So there's one going east-west and there's one going north-south as it were. So that's what the ball looks like after its first hammering. You've got a rough pattern of grooves. One going north-south and one going east-west. And they cross over at opposite sides of course. So now it's a case of hammering in the finer details, if you like, of the pattern uh, before the, the, the material becomes too hard to, to hammer. Um, it's still fairly warm-ish at this point, so it'll take a good sharp strike. But you've probably got the mm, best part of about five minutes to, to do the rest of it. I think all in all, most balls that I do, they come out with about 325 grooves, something like that. I'm not counting on this one because I'm trying to speak at the same time. It's actually better, and you'll hear it, 
if you get into a sort of rhythm, say you do six strokes at a time, Okay, now what I'm going to do is at the north and south pole, you put in three at each corner. So I'm now doing the south pole, as it were, with three strikes at each corner. And as the material gets harder, you'll, you'll notice that the, the tone of the strike is slightly higher. So it's still quite well taking the strike. You just have to give it a bit more force. Apparently the guy at Forgans, or the workman at Forgans, they could do a whole ball in something like about three minutes. Me, hmm, a good ten minutes and I have to think about it. And now what I'm doing is going over the ball and looking for any gaps in the pattern and just filling them in really. Okay, quite pleased with that now. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I won't be painting this ball uh, on, on the video, so um, it'll just be a case of getting some, some good paint, some enamel paint, putting it in the palms of my hands and, and putting it all over and then letting it to dry. And typically they need about six coats I've found to, to make a, a really nice ball. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please press the like button or the subscribe button because I will be doing some more videos all about hickory golf, antique golf in the future. Thanks for watching.